you see and hear on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe so that you can hang around and get more content, more information, uh, gain access to more resources and all that we do at the Black Boys and at the Odyssey Project. Um, also, just as importantly, or even more importantly, if you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, what I have done for over 30 years in research and program development and so much more, uh, definitely look in the description box and see how you can give to ensure that the work that we do in the community and for the community uh, will continue. Uh, look, I saw a conversation that sort of reminded me of something that I consistently talk about, um, whether it's online, whether it's with friends, whether it's in a lecture, and it's amazing. Um, and that is how we are almost to a point where we innately and inherently gravitate towards negativity. And social media has literally created this vacuum and vortex where we, uh, and it's not just, and I want to be very clear here, it's not just us, but we have to focus on us. We take care of home first. We deal with the inner issues, the inner workings. If there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. So we deal with us and the enemies on the inside, the things that make us vulnerable to other people, the things that incapacitate us and stop us from doing the things that we should be able to do to empower ourselves, to elevate ourselves, to lift ourselves. And so I'm dealing with us right now. Uh, so never think that I'm not aware of what's going on because I study life, I study behavior, I study uh, my, my, my people, I study who I believe to be the enemies of my people, I study those who are questionable and everything in between. But here's, here's the thing. We are drawn at a rate that is scary to those things that are negative, those things that are dark, those things that stir the negative emotion, the ability to give negative feedback, the ability to go on the attack, this negative dark energy that literally is detrimental to our phys physiological health. And I'm being serious here, you don't realize it, but what you entertain and what you engage is for more than what you think and, and how you feel for a moment. It is literally impacting your genetic performance. It's, in it. it's, in, it's doing so much, and this is what I talk about, and uh, I go way into it in my latest book, book number 28, uh, which is, you should have the link, you should have the link in the description bo box. If not, I'll make sure I put it there. But uh, in my latest book, Healed and Whole, I go into the depths of this. But I want to just get to this one particular point. I don't want to get too much off in that book, but the book is being released on the 30th. But here, here's what I want to get into. For nearly 10 years, you know, nearly 10 years, I have literally collected and broken down, anatomized, analyzed tons of data from social media, uh, from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, and what I can tell you is we have a proclivity from this latest thing with this Rissa Tissa, uh, whatever it is, where this person has put up over 50 something uh, episodes of her talking about how horrible her marriage was and how horrible her husband was. And people are just gravitating to it. People can't put it down. People are going and people ask me, have you checked it out? I'm going, no, why would I? When I can literally stumble across 30 negative posts about how horrible black men are and how stupid black women are for getting with these horrible black men. And I can also tell you that that can be a hundred posts about how awesome a guy is. It won't get traction. It can be a, a, a hundred posts about how awesome a, a couple has been and all of this. It won't get any traction. Uh, it can be people talking about the blessings and loves of marriage. It won't get any traction. Um, 
but let somebody talk about how this person did me. And, you know, and, and to be fair and to be honest, uh, while there is definitely no shortage of black male hate, there's no shortage of black female hate either. It's a bunch of brothers going around and going in on sisters. It's an easy thing to do. Now, everybody is doing something. Don't realize that social media is stirring. Do you realize that if I have studied my people for almost 10 years on social media, if I've gathered and downloaded and collected, and do you realize that these platforms allow you to collect and download your information off that platform, especially Facebook? So everything that's happening on Facebook and all these other places, this information is available. And if you could participate, if somebody asks you a question and you answer it, you're now part of their profile and they can download that information. So they're literally gathering information. Like every time you come in on something, every time you like something, you become a part of somebody else's data stream and people can download that information. Anything and anybody who's ever interacted with me, I've been able to download it. And what I couldn't download because you weren't interacting with me, I could go observe because it's out there in the open and I can screenshot it, I can sit up and I can take notes on it. I can do all types of different stuff that lets me understand how you move, how you think, where your head is at, what you're capable of doing, what you're not capable of doing. And if I'm doing that, imagine what uh, others are doing who have a lot uh, whose pockets are a whole lot deeper who have more nefarious intent towards you and simply you 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 and, 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 th and now they understand the power of propaganda the power of social media to not only distract you but also influence your choices your decisions what you're excited about, what you're interested in. It can literally change you. Do you realize just pick, picking up your cell phone gives you a dopamine rush? Here's the problem. The dopamine rush that you get for picking up your cell phone is actually det detrimental in and of itself. Outside of the fact you control nothing that you're going to see on that phone, so you are at the uh, mercy of whatever information is on that phone, so you give up your personal sovereignty when you pick up the phone. But check this out. So you pick up the phone, right? And you get a dopamine rush. Well, dopamine versus serotonin is two different things. Dopamine is the precursor to addiction. Dopamine uh, is a neuro, it's not on a hormone, it's a neurotransmitter. And this neurotransmitter has a rapid fire uh, mechanism, which is highly destructive to neuro uh, receptors. So when it sends signals, these that's what a neurotransmitter does, it sends signals. When it sends signals, they're rapid firing and they are disruptive and destructive to the neurotransmitters that receive them. Yes, you get happy, yes, you get excited, but it's destroying the neurotransmitters. What happens is your, your brain starts to shut down a certain amount of neurotransmitters to reduce the amount of damage. The problem is now you need to pick up the phone more in order to get the same fix in dopamine that you had at first. This is the whole premise for any addiction, right? Well, so you, you, you start doing this, right? You, 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 uh, you, you set this up and you go and you, um, start picking it up more and and over and over again eventually you destroy all the neurotransmitters in that particular neural neural pathway and so now all you're doing is something that you've become habitually trained to do pick up the phone even though you can't get the fix anymore you're picking up the phone because it's habit you do it without even thinking now you're picking up the phone but you're not getting it and uh, you can't get satisfaction through dopamine alone. Dopamine has its purpose. And when used right, it anchors things, uh, it fixes emotion, and it sets you in a, an ability to pull on and draw on and create. But when you don't have the balance of serotonin, which is a slow fire in the balancing of it, and something that's sustainable, this is where you actually get joy and happiness from, not through dopamine. Dopamine is excitement. Serotonin is actually contentment and happiness, and it's sustainable, and a lot of people are chasing the dopamine. That's why you can't buy enough clothes, you can't buy enough shoes, you can't get a big enough car, you can't get a big enough house, and you're chasing all this stuff, and in some instances, you can't get a big enough fix of negative information on social media, and they're driving you to get more, driving you to get more. Now they've monetized the negative, 
information they send it to. So not only are they negatively programming you and incapacitating you to be able to do the things that you are actually capable of do to make your life better, they are now rewarding the people who are giving it to you to do more of it so that you pursue it. And 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 and, and that's just in the social media realm. And it's happening in music, it's happening in media, in movies, and television, and we're chasing it down and consuming it at alarming rates, and it just blows my mind that that's where we are right now. And the thing is, I'll talk about this, and the, the number one is, the video won't get as much uh, attention. Number two, uh, people... Uh, 40% of the people, 40 to 45% of the people will not have even watched it this far. And it's only, I'm only 10 minutes, 11 minutes in and will not have watched it this far. Very few will watch it all the way to the end. Very few will share, share it uh, because it's, the positiveness does not create the same sensational pull and draw and excitement. And everybody wants likes. Everybody wants shares. Everybody wants people to, to, um, interact with them on social media. And while there are these pockets where there's this positive stuff going on, there's far too much negative stuff and we are far too consumed by it and it's eating us up, it's destroying us and we don't even realize it. And the thing that we need, the things we need to do, we're not prepared for, we're unaware of. And it is a highly destructive mechanism and we, con we just continue to embrace it, continue to engage it. And it is literally destroying us and the question that you have to ask yourself is why it's because we don't understand how things work sound familiar i've been saying it for years we don't understand how things work and anytime you don't understand how things work those who do will normally be able to use those things as a way to manipulate control and take power from you and if they take power from you you can never truly become what you need to be your thought processes are being manipulated and controlled and how you think controls uh, your capacity, how you move in your capacity controls what you will and will not be able to do. And in all of that, we have a lot to learn. So on that note, I am going to get ready to get out of here, but I had to drop that on you. Uh, if you Again, if you like it, if you uh, think it has some merit to it, share it. Uh, leave your leave your uh, con uh, comments and your opinions. I want to hear what you think about it. Also, if you believe in the work we're doing in the research, in the things that we have brought forth over the last 30 years, we need your support. This thing is big and we need people in minds and, 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 and commitment levels that will go after this thing and be willing to commit in a way that we make a difference. I have been here for the long haul and I'm challenging you to be a supportive mechanism and to give. But whether you give or not, this there has to be something done. On that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.